what's up what's up what's up what's up it is the wolf and i am back at it again with another review and today we will be covering the infamous iron fist there is no camera today because i honestly did not feel like getting dressed for this video so so sorry let's get into this iron fist has been getting a lot of hate lately and i don't think much of it is deserved but i am willing to admit this show is suffering from the suicide squad effect Suicide Squad was not a bad film, but it wasn't great either, and I believe that Iron Fist is currently walking this line, at least to me. The show had its moments, but overall I found myself getting a little bored with the pacing as this show does not immediately grip you like its predecessors. Iron Fist starts off slow, picks up some steam, but then will leave you feeling so unsatisfied at the end. Kind of like your ex. This is my review of Iron Fist. <laughs> Iron Fist starts off at an amazingly slow pace with Danny returning to his company after it's been inherited by his childhood friends Joy and Ward. During this time period he spent 15 years in Liu Ken training with warrior monks. The childhood friends end up having Danny committed because they refused the possibility of him surviving the plane crash that ended his parents life and supposedly his own. Before being put away in a nut house, Danny runs into Colleen, who is honestly, next to Claire and Jerry, the only thing that holds this show together in my personal opinion. Colleen becomes a source of anguish later on in the show, but we will hold that off for later because much to Danny and the viewer's surprise, Harold, the supposed dead father of Joy and Ward, is still alive and visits him in the hospital. Not long after this, Danny is able to prove to Joy and his doctor he is who he says he is and is freed from the mental institution. He is reinstated as a member of his company, much to the board's dismay, as he constantly created roadblocks for them, lining their fat, greedy little pockets. While all of this is going on, the viewer finds out that Harold is indebted to the Hand due to some kind of magic that brings him back from the dead, and it's something they bestowed upon him. This will prove to be a tricky and bizarre situation for all characters involved because Madame Gao, the head of this particular version of the hand, plans to milk him for everything he's worth. Madame Gao is busy using the funding from the Rand Corporation to push a new brand of heroin that the human body cannot get used to while simultaneously Claire pops up to tie in Daredevil, Luke Cage, and this show all together into the same universe. They do this rather seamlessly as she is there to train, likely after feeling helpless during the Luke Cage story arc, as we saw in the ending episodes. As the story progresses, Colleen and Danny begin to develop feelings for one another and almost on cue her sensei and leader of the quote unquote good hand, Bakudo, makes an appearance. After sending ninjas to snatch up Claire, the trio ends up imprisoning Madame Gao for a short time. During this time she is imprisoned, she tries to snake her way into the heads of Colleen and Claire while also admitting to setting up the deaths of Danny's parents. In the madness of surviving Gao's lackey's attack, Colleen is poisoned but Bakudo shows up in time to teach Danny how to use the Iron Fist to heal her. Claire gets separated from Danny, Colleen, and Madame Gao since Bakudo takes this time to take the incapacitated Colleen and Danny to the quote unquote good hands home front. When the two wake up, Danny speaks with Bakudo but quickly becomes suspicious of his motives and begins to snoop around. He soon finds Madame Gao and finds out that he is currently in the hands home base. He goes absolutely ballistic after finding out Colleen is part of the group that killed his family. Soon after this realization, his friend from Kunlun, Davos, appears to help him escape. The two team up to take down Bakudo, and Colleen joins up with them after Bakudo attempts to kill her. Fast forward after a battle between Colleen, Bakudo, Danny, and Davos, more issues start to unfold but these problems are most likely in the actual legal system. What? Sa what? The two team up to take down Bakudo. And Colleen joins... Okay. Fast forward after a battle between Colleen and Bakudo and a quote-unquote siblings fight between Davos and Danny. More issues start to unfold, but these problems are mostly in the actual legal system. 
After the majority of these things get settled, Colleen and Danny head back to Kunlun, and when they arrive, they are dead soldiers everywhere, and the actual place is no longer there. One of the show's strengths lie with Claire. As always, I am happy to see her doing her part in this Netflix Marvel team up by connecting the shows. She's always playing an important role and is always making sure these superheroes survive, so it's nice to see her come back. It never really feels forced and even Jerry making her own appearance known was a great little tilt to the other characters in Jessica Jones. The other is Colleen. She is literally one of the most interesting things about the series. Colleen pretty much carried the series in my opinion because she had such a twist in her story. I won't say much here, but know that the girl has a lot of decisions to make and is an absolute badass. The next thing is the foreshadowing of the team up between Joy and Davos. Although it doesn't make sense, it still sets up a great storyline. I'm interested to see how these two people who claim to love Danny so much are going to get back at him and feel like he is the reason that all these problems in their lives exist. It's going to make for a great story, even though some people may not agree with it. Weaknesses. For a guy who was taught over the course of 15 years to control his emotions, Danny has some serious emotional baggage. That should be expected due to the tragic death of his parents, but lashing out at almost everyone who tries to help him throughout this show is just downright annoying. The show overall is pretty slow and the only new introduced characters that I enjoyed was Colleen, Davos, and Joy. On top of that, many, many, many of the actors seemed totally uncomfortable performing their martial arts training. The only characters that I thought seemed to be rather comfortable was Louis Tan's character and Davos character. Everyone else seemed like they had absolutely no idea what they were doing and were counting steps in their head more than actually knowing how to fight. Of course, I've already blown out a bunch of different weaknesses, so I'm not going to keep going into it, but the pacing of the show is absolutely atrocious. It's just not interesting. Reluctantly, I give this show a depressing 5.5 to 6 out of 10. It was just not great. As I said, it suffers from the Suicide Squad effect. The show isn't horrible, but it definitely isn't great and pales in comparison to its counterparts, Daredevil, Luke Cage, and Jessica Jones. All of these shows kick you in the jaw, jolting your adrenaline in the first episode and keeps you fiending for more on the edge of your seat watching the whole thing in a night. Iron Fist just doesn't have that air about it. It's not bad. It's a meh more than anything. Beyond that, I literally had to google the end of Iron Fist because after watching the finale, I could not tell you not even a fraction of what was going on. This isn't because I was confused, but mostly because I was bored to tears and not retaining the information. I think that's the biggest problem with the show. It takes so long to pick up and literally delivers very little for your patience. Iron Fist comes off as a better supporting character or a character that can be taken in small doses on a group like the Defenders, but just isn't interesting enough to carry a whole show on his back, which is disappointing seeing how his background, outside of his bland personality and reactions, is very interesting. It is mostly interesting to me because I am a martial artist, but even the shooting of the fight scenes were so slow and robotic. It was just hard to watch. Overall, this show is a sad 5.5 to 6 out of 10. I still have faith that Marvel and Netflix will deliver better series with upcoming I still have faith that Marvel and Netflix will deliver better with the upcoming seasons of Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Daredevil, and even the new shows on the horizon such as Punisher and the Defenders. Well, there you have it. That's my take on Iron Fist. This is definitely not one of those shows I'd recommend you just go out and watch. It is pretty bland um, from all aspects. It's kind of disappointing, really. But did you like this review? Let me know in the comment section below. Like, share, subscribe. Also, please join the Geeky TV Patreon. I post exclusive videos there. You get early access to content, as well as the Geeky Workouts program is there only. And you can earn free shirts and stuff like that. So please feel free to join. Let your friends know, share, and like all that good stuff. 
Also, hit that bell so you know when I'm uploading. And even though the wolf has got a scat, just remember, long live the wolf pack. Ah!